Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. I'm going to give you guys just a few minutes to start signing online. Let's fill up this room today. I'm Andrew Tao. I'm so glad that you're joining me wherever you're joining me from. Do me a favor. Begin to share this broadcast. Let me know where you're joining me from, what city, what state, what nation of the world that you're joining me from, and share, 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 share the broadcast. Because we have a, I have a word from the Lord for you today. I have been so excited about this broadcast. I've been unable to contain myself almost because I've had a word for the last few days that the Lord has been speaking to me, and I could not wait to get it to you. So as you guys start signing online, let me know where you're joining me from, what city, what state, what nation of the world that you're joining me from, and go ahead and share the broadcast. Let me see here. I'm having a little trouble seeing my comments here, but I see some of you signing online. I'm going to give you just a few minutes. Let me know where you're joining me from. Uh, I see on here my comments are blocked for a second. Let me try to figure that out. But you keep commenting as you guys are um, fixing this new format. Hallelujah. We will get to the comments. You keep typing it out. I'll get to them in just a second. But I want to welcome you to today's broadcast. In fact, I titled this broadcast, Get Ready. Because I'm telling you today, God is moving on your behalf. Some of you need to understand that today is a day of divine appointment. Today is the day you've been praying for. It's the day you've been waiting for. You say, Andrew, what makes it special about today? It's, I believe we're in a Kairos moment. I believe that today is a setup from God on his divine calendar. I don't know who I came to prophesy to, but I, knew, I know that God sent me and he said, there's going to be ones that tune into this broadcast, that watch the replay, that it's their divine appointment. He's going to shift the trajectory of your life. I don't know who this is for, but get ready. He said, today is a day of answered prayers. Today is a day of manifestation of God's promises. Oh yes, I said, today is a day of change. Today, God is bringing some things around again. Let me know. Okay, as you are signing online, here comes up my comments. Let me know where you're joining me from. Uh, uh, good evening, good day, good afternoon. I see Arizona is in the house. I see Texas in the house. I see Mexico is in the house. Uh, the UK is in the house. Hello, Cartersville, Georgia. Come on, let me know. Keep telling me where you're joining me from. What city, what state, what nation of the world? South Africa is in the house. Maryland, welcome, 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 everybody. Go ahead and share the broadcast. I want to get the word out to as many people as possible, not so I can make my name famous, but so I can deliver the word of the Lord. I've been spending time with God, and I believe we are in a season of manifestation. In fact, just type that out in the comments section. Type out the word manifestation. Uh, even if you don't know how to spell it, type it out and proclaim it, declare it with your mouth, because I believe that is what God is doing in this season. We're going to see God miracles, God changes, God shifts all around us. In fact, I hear the Lord saying there's such a, a speeding up of time that even before you pray, before you're finished praying, God is going to answer it. I love the scripture in, in Isaiah, Isaiah 65, 24, and it says, I will answer them before they even call to me. Come on, somebody. We need to shout right there. I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayer. So even as you're still talking about your needs, God is saying to you, it's already done. Are you ready? No, are you ready to see the manifestation? Thank you for those stars. Yes, you can support the broadcast by sharing stars or going to andrewtell.org, and we have many ways to give. Thank you for sowing a seed into this broadcast. But are you really ready? to see the manifestation. I know all of us shout, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to see, I'm ready. 
But are you really ready? Have you been preparing yourself to see for God to answer for the manifestation of that promise? See, there's many people that shout, I'm ready, I want it, I'm ready. But I'm telling you, how many have really dug the well? How many have dug the the, the, the ditches preparing for the water to come. How many have been preparing their family, their household, their business, their ministry? See, there's a lot of groundwork that has to be laid. I look back over my life and I think, God, I was, I remember praying to him 10 years ago or, or 15 years ago. Come on, I don't want to go much further than that because I don't want, want everybody to know how long we've been doing this. But I was like, God, I'm ready for this promise. I I, I've been doing this since I was 12 years old. And I said, God, I'm ready. I'm so ready for, for this door to open. You've spoken to me about nations. I'm ready, God. But you know what? I wasn't really ready. Even though I had gifting, even though I had anointing, even though I had a strong relationship with God, there were things that had yet to be, uh, foundations that had yet to be laid that I wasn't ready for the outpouring. It would have swallowed me up. But I hear the Lord saying to you today, hear this, it's time to get ready because we are in an accelerated season. Come on. Somebody begin to say acceleration. Somebody type that out and declare it over your family, declare it over your finances. Come on, I release that right now. There is an accelerated mi miracle that is being released to you, an accelerated breakthrough that is coming into your life right now in the name of Jesus. I say, yes, Lord, I receive the acceleration. I receive the accelerated destiny in Jesus' name. No more delays. I say, God, no more delays. Break it off of us. Complete us. Finish us to be able to withstand and uphold the blessing of God. Come on. It starts with you. Begin to ask the Lord, prepare me to receive the blessing. Prepare me to receive the outpouring of your spirit. God, I'm asking you to prepare me. This morning when I was uh, spending time with the Lord, I began to, uh, I made a post on Facebook. And it says, the manifestation of God's promises are about to blow your mind. They're about to blow your mind. You know why? Because whatever we can conceive with our mind, God has so much better. God is so much bigger. He has so much more than what we could even describe. He said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are greater than your ways. So the manifestation of God's promise. He said, when I bring it to pass, it's going to be so much better than you've ever dreamed. It's going to blow your mind. Come on, who's ready for their mind to be blown? Who's ready? Saying, God, I prepared. I'm ready. I am now getting myself ready for the manifestation because I believe some of you, by the time we get off this broadcast, I believe you're going to see the answer to prayer. Yes, I do. I believe there's sick bodies that are going to be healed today. I believe there's financial breakthroughs that are going to be released today. Who am I prophesying to right now? Get ready for the manifestation. Get ready for the manifestation. I'm going to say it again. Get ready for the manifestation of God to blow your mind. It's so much better than you could do for yourself. And I put, there are some people that have come against you that are about to be very disappointed because God is coming through for you. Now listen, I don't just write these posts. Thank you for those stars. Yes, keep sharing the stars. Let's have a star party today. But but I, I don't just write these posts because they rhyme or they sound good. And I think, well, that's not, no. This is what the Lord is speaking to me. And he's declaring a message to you. He's saying, there's going to be some people that regret doing you how they did you. And, and that's not a vengeful word. That's not, uh, uh, well, let's take revenge. No, God is saying we've got to learn to forgive. We've got to be like Joseph. When our brothers come back, we say, oh, you meant it for evil. I'm telling you, but God meant it for my good. I love you. I thank you that you were even used. I had to get over to Egypt. I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. Some things are about to make sense to you. Some things, I'm going to say that right now. I feel fine. 
fire on that. Some things that you did not understand why you went through this, why you went through that, why this one rejected you, why that door shut, why this one did He said some things are about to make sense to you and you're going to see that my hand was in it. In fact, there's going to be some people that come and they say, I'm sorry. There's going to be some people that repent and say, I'm sorry for how I treated you, what I did to you. Come on, somebody. But you've got to be able to forgive them if you want to walk in the manifestation of God. He's saying you've got to walk in forgiveness. You've got to walk in forgiveness. That's, that, that is so powerful. You've got to walk in forgiveness if you want to see. Thank you for those stars. If you want to see the manifestation that I'm talking about. In fact, this isn't uh, something I prepared, but I hear the Holy Spirit saying right now that some of you have soul wounds. You have deep hurts within you that you've learned to cover up. You've learned to, to move ahead of it. You've learned to uh, move with out it, but God says, I want to heal those places. I want to heal those places where you hurt. I want to go back and I want to heal the trauma. I want to heal the brokenness. I want to heal those soul wounds. He says, I want you to be whole and complete. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He says, I'm releasing healing to you. Come on, if that's you right now, I want you to begin to lift up your hands because I hear the Holy Spirit saying that he's going to bring a healing to you and a wholeness to you so that you can pour it into others. So you can pour your uh, uh, healing that he is pouring into you, you can pour it into the lives of others. Come on, who is that right now? If that's you, just say it's me. Type it out in the comment section. I want to know who the Holy Spirit is prophesying to right now. He is saying to you, I see those saying me, me, me. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Lord, do it now. Do it now. Pour that healing into them. Pour the healing into them, God, those soul wounds. I take authority over every device, over every weapon, over every plot, every scheme that the enemy has used against you. I say no, it returns to him null and void. And I thank you, Lord, for turning it for their good. And now the same healing that you've poured into me, God, I ask you to pour it into them. I thank you this is a season of forgiveness. This is a season of restoration. This is a season for manifestation. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, thank you for those stars. I hear the Holy Spirit saying he's doing a, a quick work. He is doing a quick work. He is doing a quick work because time is essential. The timing of the Lord is at hand. Yes, it is. Your time is here. Get ready. Come on, that's why I titled this message, Get Ready. Get ready for the manifestation. Get ready for the promises. Thank you for those stars. Get ready for God to do exactly. He is not a man that he should lie. I know some of you watching this broadcast, maybe others made you promises and disappointed you. Maybe others said this and did not come through. But I want to tell you, God, when he speaks, it is. When he said, let there be light, there was light. And there's some promises that he has spoken to you. And you say, well, Andrew, he spoke it and it has not come. Get ready for the manifestation. Get ready. Oh. If I was T.D. Jakes, and I'm not, but I'm still going to say it, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready today for the manifestation. There are turnarounds. Hear me. There's turnarounds that are taking place right now right now in the name of Jesus. That situation has to turn. Right now, that which has been held up has to be released. Right now, delay, delay is broken. Delay is broken. Even demonic delay. The enemy has sent assassins to try to hold back your promises to stop the word of God from coming forth, but you are unstoppable. The word of God is unstoppable. That which he has spoken shall come to pass and it will no longer be delayed. It is coming forth now, now, now in Jesus name. Get ready. Get ready. Thank you for those stars. In fact, 
I want to go to the Word today. Go ahead and share this broadcast. Those of you signing on live with me, go ahead and share, share, share. Let's get the Word of God out there today. Let's break some numbers. Let's break some numbers of people signing on today. So go ahead and share this broadcast. I see the room filling up, but we want to break. I, I, I'm the, I heard the Holy Spirit say, begin to pray and begin to partner with Him to break records, uh, break social media records, break uh, uh, boundaries. I hear the Lord saying, uh, and I, I prophesy this to you, get ready for expansion. Get ready for expansion. The enemies tried to box many of us in, but I say God says He is unboxable. He is a God that steps beyond borders. He steps beyond anything. You can't fence, fix him, fence Him in. He is a big God. So get ready. Receive that today. Thank you for those stars. Get ready to receive this today. But I've been in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis is powerful. I'm telling you, it's just so powerful. And at Ramp Church Chattanooga, I've been preaching uh, and prophesying on, on in the book of Genesis and, and talking about the birthright, talking about uh, don't trade the birthright for some stew. Don't try trade, uh, uh, you know, don't try to con when, when Jacob began to tell uh, uh, Isaac, he put on the sheep skin and he said, are you my son? Uh, he said, I'm Esau. He wasn't Esau. He dropped his identity so that he could try to get approval from his father. See, that's what happens to many of us is we so desire approval that we will drop our identity. No, God says, Jacob, you are important. He said, don't try to be Esau. Don't try to be a cheap carbon copy of anybody. What I promised you is coming to pass. What God said is coming coming to pass. I want to say that one more time. What God said to you is coming to pass. And I believe today is a day of release. As I said, I believe today is a day of release for many of you. But in Genesis chapter 24, I'm going back from where I've been at Ramp Church. Uh, but there is some text here, and I'm going to sum some of it up because it is a broadcast, and I don't like to go too long. But in Genesis chapter 24, Abraham, Father Abraham, the father of our faith, he begins to tell his servant, he said, I, I need to find a wife for my son Isaac. Come on, the promised one. He said, I need to find a son. I want you to go find a son. I want you to go back to my father's country. I want you to find a, a wife for my, my son Isaac. And uh, Eliezer, Eliezer uh, uh, his servant says to him, well, what if I can't find one? It's a long way. What if she won't come back? Because that's a long journey. What if she says, no, do you want me to take your son Isaac there? He says, promise me, you will not take my son Isaac there. Why? Because it's so important that we understand that God said he was going to bless him in that land. And in that place is where he was going to multiply. So it was important that he not take his son back to the uh, uh, land that was not promised, but he stayed in the land because that's where, where God was going to bless him. So he said, promise me that you won't take my son. He said, okay, I promise you. And so he takes, and I want us to pick up, I'm just going to read a, a few verses as you're sharing the broadcast. Keep commenting, keep sending up those emojis. Come on, that's the way you say amen. That's the way you pull on the anointing on, on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. If you're on YouTube, just click uh, 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 subscribe and click that bell so you can get live notifications. If you're on Facebook, like the page, follow the page, turn on live notifications. But in Genesis chapter 24 and verse 10, it says this, and the servant took 10 camels. Somebody say 10. Come on, right now, just type out 10. Somebody, just put one zero if you don't want to type out 10. But, but, but you need to understand because there's great significance to this scripture right here. He said, and the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hands. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto a city of Nahor. And his camels, and he made his camels to kneel down at the city, a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that the women would draw water. Now, so what happens is he takes 10 camels. Come on, 
Do we have anybody writing 10 right now? My comments are delayed, but I hope you're typing out 10. 10 is very significant. BibleStudy.org teaches us that, that God said 10 times. God said, he repeated that phrase 10 times in the book of Genesis alone. It is believed that the number 10 is not a coincidence in this case, but it's showing the creative power of God. It's a symbol of completeness because the creation was completed and also the words of God were completed. There were 10 plagues of Egypt. A tithe is the 10th. Come on, somebody. 10 is very significant. It means fullness, completeness, wholeness, and an end to a cycle. I want to tell you, you are stepping into a new season, and it's an end of a cycle. I'm prophesying to you right now. He says, get ready, because uh, it is your end of your cycle that you have been in. Many of you have been on repeat. You know, I was uh, ministering to someone the other day, and I said, you've been in the same cycle. You, you get to the place of breakthrough, and God is breaking through, and as soon as you do, you back down, or, or you go left when you should have went right. Come on. You, we've got to learn to recognize by the Spirit of God cycles in our life, cycles that the enemy tries to put us in so that we will miss the plan of God. But I've come on Facebook to tell somebody today, you're not going going to miss it again because he is breaking the cycle because the number 10 means you're ending a cycle and you're coming into something new. I prophesy by the Spirit of the Lord that God is doing a suddenly in your life today. So he said, the servant takes 10 camels and he loads it up with the wealth of his master Abraham. And he comes to this place, and he makes the camels to kneel down at the well. Now, we know in the Word of God in, in the, the East that women would go to draw water at the well. So it was a good place for him to go look for the single women of the city to find Isaac a wife. Now, I was thinking about this this week, and I was thinking, man, what a responsibility that this servant had upon him. Can you imagine God's plan uh, resting on your shoulders? Because this was going to be the seed of Abraham, who was bringing the lineage of Jesus, who was uh, now going to uh, bring the lineage of who we are through Jesus in that lineup. This was an important assignment. But I want you to know your assignment is important. Your assignment is important to God because he has a plan for your life. And so every assignment is important. And he has not forgotten you. I want to just tell you right now, he has not forgotten you. And so he comes to this well and he causes the camels to kneel down. Camels are very important animals and modes of transportation in the word of God. In fact, I almost titled this message, the camels are coming, or the camels have been dispatched, or the camels are on their way. But I thought, you know, I've heard a lot of messages like that, and so I'm not going to title this broadcast that. However, you know, uh, the difference between a horse and a camel are camels bend down for you to get up on them. See, some of you have been in a low position, and you've been trying to climb up, you've been trying, but it's like you have not been able to do it. But in this season, the camels are coming, and they're going to kneel down so that you can get on. They're giving, God is giving you permission to go up. Guess what? This is the hour that you are going up. Come on, get ready. Get ready. Who's ready right now? And so it says that he took 10 camels, he comes to the well, he's looking for, for a wife for Isaac, he takes this responsibility so seriously, and he begins to pray. Good thing to start, a good place to start is prayer. And he says, uh, I'm asking of you for your servant Abraham's sake, let the right woman, let the right girl come, and when she comes, let her offer me to drink, but then... Let her ask, uh, also water my camels to drink. Not because he could not do it himself, but as a prophetic sign, let me know that this is the one. Let me know, give me a sign, this is the one. And so as soon as he let out that prayer, verse 15 says this, And it came to pass before he had done speaking. 
Come on, that's for you today. I believe that we are moving into a season that before we're done speaking, before we're done asking, come on, Isaiah 61, that God is going to send the answer. He is going to break through. He is going to send your answer. Come on, I'm prophesying to you right now. He is going to do it before you're even done speaking. I believe that some of you, before the end of this broadcast, you're going to have the answer. I believe it right now by faith in Jesus' name. And it came to pass. In my Bible, I have that in parentheses. And it came to pass. Come on, some of you need to open up your mouth right now and say, in my life, whatever you're believing God for, and it came to pass. In my church, in my ministry, in my home, come on, begin to say, and it came to pass. In my business, and it came to pass. In my family, with my children, in my finances, and it came to pass. Healing in my body, and it came to pass. Oh, I love that. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with the pitcher upon her shoulder. Come on, she was prepared. She had the pitcher upon her shoulder. And surely the servant began to think that must be her. That, that must be the one. However, we know that in the east, this was the time for women to go gather water. And they all carried pitchers on their shoulders. And it says, And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had she known any man. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. She went down and she came up. And verse 17 says, And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, to drink a little water from the pitcher. Now, I want you to see the, the, the significance of this. Thank you for those stars. Thank you for sharing, sowing into this broadcast. But, but I want you to see the significance here. Because not only did he pray and then saw her coming, but he took off running. He made advancement towards his promise. See, some of us wait long enough and we'll say, well, God's got to do this and God's got to do that. But sometimes you've got to show the initiative and you've got to do what you can do in the natural, not help God out, but you've got to take steps of faith to see what God is going to do. See, if I just sat around in my prayer closet, but I never went live on Facebook, I never showed up to services to pray for people, uh, I believe I would not be fulfilling the will and purpose of God. So sometimes you've got to take that next step and begin to go he says he ran after her and said give me a little to drink and she said drink my lord and she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him to drink now verse 19 and when she had done giving him to drink she said i will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking now he prayed remember the servant pray, give me the sign that this is the one. Let her not only offer me to drink, but let her also offer the camels. See, the camels have significance in the word of God. They have significance. Your camels have been dispatched. Your camels are on the way. Come on, somebody say my camels are on the way. Somebody say my camels are coming. This, get ready, your camels, I'm prophesying to you right now. Your camels are coming. And throughout this uh, text, the camels were very significant in this story. Remember how many? 10, that means an end of a cycle. It means a new season. It means wholeness and completeness. And so it was very significant. And so he prayed the prayer, let her offer to water my camels. Now, I want to read to you real quickly, if I have it here, the significance. Let me see if she... Yes. Ten camels will drink somewhere between 140 and 250 gallons by the time they are through. Now, it says... Let me gather water and they will drink until they have done drinking. So Rebecca was not some uh, beauty queen, although she was fair to look upon. She wasn't one that was afraid to, to get in there and do some work. See, that was a destiny decision that she made. 
And so she said, I'll, I'll, I'll get your, your camels to drink also. Uh, see, it would have been fascinating if she would have just stopped with him. She would have missed her promise, but she did not stop. See, some of you feel like it's easier to stop. It's easier to give up. I've done enough. I've gone to church enough. I've prayed enough. I, I've given enough. But God is saying when you take that next step, that's where your breakthrough comes. That next step is where your miracle is released. Come on, I'm here to encourage somebody. Don't stop. Don't stop. The next step is your step to breakthrough. Oh, I feel fire on that right now. I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling, if you're experiencing right now the Holy Ghost moving on you, but I believe there's breakthrough right now on this broadcast being released in Jesus' name. So she had steps to go down and steps to come up. So it wasn't just dipping it in the water. No, she was going up and coming, going down and coming up, going down and coming up. 140 to 250 gallons. We don't know exactly how much, but she was sowing seed into her future. See, that's what you're doing right now. There's some, some of you going to school, some of you building a business, some of you starting your ministry. You're sowing seeds into your future. It's not a waste of time. You're preparing. That's why I titled this message, Get Ready, because the Lord told me to tell somebody, you're not wasting your time. You are sowing seed into your future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. I sense the Holy Spirit moving right now. I sense Him moving right now on your behalf. On your behalf, God is saying, I'm answering you. I'm answering you. Some of you have been saying, where are you, God? What do you have for me, God? What's next in my life? God says, I've already heard you, and I'm answering you, and your testimony is about to be, and it came to pass. I'm about to blow your mind with the manifestation of my promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So she drew waters, uh, water for all the camels. Now, stay with me just another minute because I'm about to pray. I'm going to prophesy, and I believe we're going to see miracles. But I've got to get this word out to you in Jesus' name. And so we know what happens. She goes back. He goes back to, to Rebecca's parents' house and she begins to tell them of Abraham, tells them of his son Isaac, says, uh, says I've come here to get uh, a wife for him, and I think Rebecca is the one. And so it says, verse 53, in chapter 24, it says, And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. So the camels brought forth jewels of gold. Thank you for those stars. Jewels of gold, jewels of silver, and raiment. Treasures. God is saying, these camels are loaded with blessings for you. These camels are not to drain you. See, some people would look at that text and say, well, that took Rebecca too much effort. She was having to go down the stairs and come up the stairs and, and 140 to 250 gallons of water. That seems, that seems like a lot of work. Uh, you know, she was sowing into her future. And what did she reap? She re reaped reward. She re re reaped treasures. God is saying, you are going to see even natural manifestations. In fact, I hear the Lord saying there is a transfer of wealth, uh, a transfer of treasure that is coming to you, people of God, if he can trust you with it. As long as the treasure doesn't have your heart, God says, I will bless you. As long as it doesn't grip you more than God, he will bless you. He wants to bless you to be a blessing. And so these camels brought treasures to you, but not only to her, but to her family, to her brothers, to her mother, uh, uh, to her father. And so he was a sowing into Isaac's future. And so he says, let me take her to, to back to, to Isaac and to Abraham. And they said, we want her to stay a few days. I don't have time to, to teach all this, but he says, we want to... Keep her a few days, and then she can go. And he says, please, let us go now. It's a long journey. Abraham is, is, is sick. It's the time. God answered our prayer. We know God is in this. And, and I'll just say that to you right now. Some of you are saying, well, 
uh, dragging your feet and God saying, no, now is a now, it's a now season. That's going to make sense because your spirit is being tugged right now. It's a now season. It's time to move forward. And, and so the word says, that they gave her servants, they sewed into her, she mounted on the camels, and she took off on the journey. Uh, and so she begins to go. And uh, then it says, verse 61, I want to read this together, verse 61. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels. So remember these ten camels that we've been talking about, the camels that God has already dispatched on your behalf. You say, Andrew, is a camel going to show up on my door? I believe camels are going to come. I'm not talking about an animal, but I'm talking you talking about a, a mode of transportation of the blessing and the promises that God has for you, the camels are coming. The camels are already on their way. The camels are loaded down with blessing. Who is this for right now? The camels have been dispatched. They're on their way. And God says to you today, get ready because you are going to see them in your family. You're going to see them in your business. You're going to see them in your home. Thank you for those stars. You're going to see them come forth with everything that God has promised you. Don't you worry. The camels have been dispatched and Rebecca arose. The very things that she sowed into. Oh, this is so powerful. Let me go to the power of a seed. You say, well, preachers are always talking about money because money was very important to God. Uh, there's a law called sowing and reaping, and that's how God blesses us. He uses our faithfulness in our seed. I'm not taking up an offering so I can feel freedom to share with you right now. But she sowed by getting that water and uh, uh, giving those camels to drink. She was sustaining them so so she could get up on the camel. She could not only receive the blessings that the camel was bringing, but then she could get on it. And when it was going to be her mode of transportation, she was sowing into her future. She was sowing into her destiny. And so it says she arose and her damsels and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And then I want to skip on down to verse 63, and this is where we're going. I'm, I, I'm about to pray because I sense the Holy Spirit is going to release something supernatural. It's going to be a manifestation beyond something you can think about. Come on, who is this for? Who is this for? God has said uh, uh, the, 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 the camels uh, are going to be many modes uh, or many a variety of of different things. Don't restrict me, I hear the Lord say. Don't restrict me to only this person can bless you, this job can bless me, uh, only uh, the government can bless me, or my blessing's going to come this way. No, don't restrict God because he is not limited to our thinking. He says, begin to dream big because I'll even exceed that. I'll even go beyond that. Your God is an Ephesians 3.20 God. Thank you for those stars. Thank you for sowing into this broadcast. But he said, get ready because you are sowing into your future. And he says, and then Isaac, verse 63. Come on, single people, you need to claim this. Those of you that are married, you need to claim this because God's given you divine connections. Somebody just type that out in the comment section. Divine connections. You needed divine connections so that you could fulfill your assignment. And I hear the Lord saying that before you even stop uh, uh, finished asking, he, the answer to prayer is coming. The manifestation is coming. Somebody type that out. If you're believing for divine connections, I see that, Holly, in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for releasing divine connections. I thank you for Steve. Let them, him receive divine connections. I receive that for me. Divine connections in Jesus' name. They've all, they're already on their way. The camels have already been dispatched, and they are coming back. Come on. They are coming back with divine connections connections with divine relationships and the plan and the purpose of God. And it says that Isaac went out to meditate in the field in, at the evening tide and he lifted up his eyes and he, and behold, and he saw and behold, the camels were coming 
and he lifted up his eyes. Come on. And he lifted up his eyes. Some of you have been looking too low. You've been looking over here. Oh, I guess it's going to be like this. No, he says, lift up your eyes. Begin to look out because you're going to see the camels coming. Who's this for right now? He says, get ready. Lift up your eyes. Oh, I sense the fire of God flowing through this broadcast. Lift up your eyes because the camels are on their way. He said, your destiny is coming. Your divine connections are coming. Everything God promised you and more is coming forth in Jesus' name. And he lifted up his eyes and saw. Now that word behold means he stopped and he looked. Thank you for those stars. And behold, the camels were coming. Oh God, you're doing exactly what you promised you would do. Oh God, uh, you sent uh, the servant with the camels and now I see him coming back. And now they're coming back with my promise. I sowed a seed into my future. I sent a seed of faith. In, I sent my camels. He sent Abraham's wealth and, and riches that sowed into Rebekah's family. And now I see it coming back to me. I see the, tick, the camels are coming. Somebody type that out. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. Come on, begin to prophesy that. Even with your mouth, begin to prophesy, my camels are coming. The camels that God has for me, they're coming. The camels, they're already on the way. I'm lifting up my eyes, and I'm going to stop and look. I'm going to behold. Because you know what? Rebecca, that one that's on the camel, holds the key to your future. Oh, I don't know if you just heard that right now. But what the camel's bringing was Rebecca, who held the key to the blessing or held the key to the destiny of Isaac because she birthed Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, she birthed the plan of God. So what's coming on this camel is not going to be something that's just like, okay, that was... No, it's going to be the destiny of God. I'm prophesying to you right now. Get ready. Because the, the camel that is coming to you is going to bring forth your destiny. It's going to bring forth the words that God has promised over your life. It's going to bring forth everything that God spoke to you. The camel, this camel that's coming is going to be beyond your wildest dream. I hear the Lord saying that right now. It's going to be beyond anything you had before. Your best days are not behind you. Your best days are ahead of you. And lift up your eyes, child of God, because the camel is coming and it's bringing Rebecca. It's, it's carrying your destiny. It's coming. It's bringing your mode of multiplication. Come on. It's bringing the vehicle. I know. Some of you ladies right now may be get, getting aggravated with me. She's not a vehicle. I understand that. But it's what God used to birth Isaac's destiny. Their destinies were intertwined. And I believe right now God is bringing divine connections. Hallelujah. I receive that, Lord. Come on, lift up your hands and just begin to receive that. I say the camels are coming. I hear the Holy Spirit say, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. And they're not coming empty. They're not coming with a dead beat. They're not coming with uh, uh, someone that, that, that's a set up for destruction. No, they're coming with your destiny. Yes. They're coming with your destiny. They're coming with multiplication. They're coming with God's promises, the manifestation of God's promises. And it says, behold, the camels were coming and Rebecca lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel for she said, had said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her unto his mother, Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her. Come on, what God is doing in your life, you're going to love. You're going to, God does not want you miserable. I want to say that again. 
what God is doing in this season, you're going to love. You're going to have surprises from your father. You know, I was talking uh, with someone the other day, and I was ministering to someone, and they were telling me about, you know, I feel like God has uh, planted me in this church, although it's dead, although I'm not being fed. Uh, they planted, I'm planted here, and I said, Oh, that's not how God works. God doesn't want you to be in a dead place. He doesn't want you staying in a, a, a dead situation. God wants to birth life in you. God wants you to feel the overflowing. He said, Isaac loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So Sarah had died. See, some of you have gone through a death season. Come on, I know who I'm here for right now. He said, some of you have gone through a death season where promises have died, where you've gone through great disappointment. You've gone through mourning. You've gone through weeping. Your heart was shattered into a million pieces. You were so disappointed at things that didn't work out the way you thought they were going to work out. But I hear the Lord saying what I am doing in this now season, he says, is going to make up. It's going to be a comfort to you. You are going to love what I am doing. You're going to love what the camels are bringing to you. You're going to love what I am releasing through you. Are you hearing me right now? He says, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. I am turning your weeping night into morning. I'm bringing you a joyful morning. You're going to rejoice again. You're going to laugh again. You're going to shout again. Come on. Come on somebody right now. I sense right now heaviness. Heaviness is breaking off of your life. I thank you, Lord. The assignment of the enemy is to keep you bound down. The, the assignment of the enemy is to keep you weighed down, weighed down with sickness, weighed down with depression, weighed down with disappointment. See, I know what it's like to go through disappointment. I know what it's like to go through heartbreak. Sometimes people see uh, people that are ministers and think, well, they never, they, you've never been in my situation. No, I've never been in your situation, but you've never been in my situation either. We all go through times of disappointment. We all go through times where our heart's been shattered and where we've looked at things and we thought, God, how will you receive glory from this? You know how? Because he said, uh, after that death season, after that season uh, of heaviness, after that season of mourning, God says, weeping endures for a night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. He's promised you a morning time. Not mourning like weeping. Mourning like it's a brand new day. Mourning like something is breaking through. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying right now that He is breaking through. He is breaking through that wall. Lift up your eyes because the camels are coming. In the distance, oh, they're coming on the way. And they're not coming empty. They're coming with your destiny. They are coming with the, the comfort. And they are coming with your promise. And you're going to love this thing. He said, you're going to love what I am doing in this season of your life. Who is this for right now? If it's for you, begin to say it's for me. Come on, claim it. Claim it right now. Begin to say it by faith with your mouth. The power of life and death is in your tongue. You say, this next season I'm going to love. This next season I'm walking in blessing. The camels have been dispatched. They are on their way and they're not coming empty. I thank you for my Rebecca. I thank you for my promise. I thank you for my camels. I thank you you're t turning weeping into joy. I thank you you're bringing forth your promises, God. I thank you for doing exactly what you promised you were going to do. Come on right now, you need to have a praise break. I'm saying to somebody right now, you need to have a praise break because God hand, uh, God's hand begins to move when you begin to praise him. Stop complaining. That's the repellent of God. When you begin to complain, 
Come on, to ask the children of Israel. When you begin to mur mur murmur and complain, uh, God can't move. But the minute you begin to give him praise and you begin to thank him, he is who he says he is. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The word says he will inhabit the praises of his people. That word inhabit means he makes residence or he comes down and sits in the midst of your praise. So I dare you right now. I know some of you say, Andrew, I've been going through a death season. It's been a death of the promise. It's been a death of a, a, a business or a ministry. It's been a season of, of weeping. I dare you right now to begin to lift up a praise and give God something to inhabit because I'm here to prophetically announce to you today there has been a shift in season. There has been a shift in destiny. There has been a shift. I prophesy a shift right now. Get ready because the camels are coming. The camels are coming. And guess what? Your Rebecca, women are saying, my Rebecca, your destiny, should I say, is on its way. It's on its way. It's coming. And God's saying, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's not going to be something you tolerate. I want to tell you right now, this thing is not going to be something that you put up with. No, God says you're going to love it, and it's going to be a season of comfort. It is going to be a great comfort to you. See, I love uh, Isaiah uh, when it starts talking about comforting his people. I love the Psalms where it begins to talk about comfort because there's some things that you go through that you think, I may never experience comfort again. God says he sent the Holy Spirit to be your comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit to be your help. He sent the Holy Spirit to be your guide. He says, I want you to be, comf uh, uh, to be comforted. I want you to enjoy your life. He said, we should not, uh, you know, I, I think to myself sometimes, people are living to get to heaven. God wants you to walk in authority here on the earth. You have an assignment on this earth. And he says, I want to bless you as long as the blessings don't overtake you. He says, I want you to love what I'm doing in your life. I want you to love. When I give you Rebecca, I want it to be a comfort to you. When I send this camel a blessing, I want it to be a blessing to you. So I don't know who this is for, but I believe many watching this live, come on, share the broadcast because there's some others that are going to watch the replay that God is sending that comfort. He is sending that camel. He is sending that destiny moment. He is sending that thing that's going to comfort you from the time of loss, that's going to transition and shift you into a season of multiplication, send you into a season of your destiny. Come on. This is for you right now. You say, well, I've heard messages similar to this, and I believe that it didn't happen. Listen, if you go in with that mindset, you won't. That's why I titled it Get Ready, because you've got to get yourself in, line, in alignment with what God is saying. The Word says, if you believe in the Lord your God, you'll be established. If you believe His prophets, so shall you prosper. That word prosper means break out, break forth, be good. Come on. That is what God is saying. I want to break you out of the struggle. I want to break you out of the heartache. I want to break you through and break you forth. And I want you to be good. And I want you to love. That's why I'm sending camels to you that hold Rebecca. And she is the key to unlock what I've promised you. He said, Jacob's coming. Israel's coming. Nations are being born of you. Come on, somebody. You say, well, I'm not that important. Yes, you are. Yes, you are to God. Your destiny is important. Your future is important. Your kids are important. Your ministry and your assignment is important. He says to you today, get ready. Because the camels, look up. They're on their way. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. Oh, I prophesy that to you right now. You're going to see it today. I believe many. I received testimonies last week. By the end of the broadcast, my, my messages were filling up. And forgive me that I haven't gotten back to many of you because I tried to read them all myself and answer them personally. And I was telling a, a guy that I was meeting with yesterday, I said, you know, 
I can't just write back thank you or, or one or two sentences. You know, I, I sometimes write too much back for, for prayer requests and different things, but I love hearing your testimonies. So I apologize to you if I haven't gotten back to you yet. I will. Just give me a little bit of time. But testimonies from last week's broadcast. I believe today the camels are coming. I believe today that the key to your uh, uh, abundance God is releasing to you. Divine alignments, divine connections. And I just keep hearing the Lord say this, so I'm going to say it again, although I've already said it. God says to you, to you, you're going to love it. You're going to love what God is doing. It's going to be a comfort to you. It's not going to be a burden. He says, this time, it's, you're going to love it. I, I don't know why I keep, why the Holy Spirit keeps leading me to say that. Maybe uh, I believe there's someone watching that you say, uh, well, you know, this and that, and maybe you're kind of down on the next of your life. God says, don't be down. Get your hopes up because what I'm doing now, you're going to love. I'm about to blow your mind with the manifestations of the things that I've promised. The blessings that those camels are bringing, he says, you're going to say, I have never seen God do anything like this before because the end of the thing is better than the former. Get ready. This is going to be a better season. It's going to be greater than your last season. I hear the Lord saying, you're going to be more effective in this season than you've ever been in any prior season before. Don't romance the past. Don't romance you know, 10 years ago or two years ago, don't romance it because he says, what I have for you on this camel, what is coming in this season is going to be greater than anything you've ever seen before. Who's that word for right now? Who is receiving it right now? You're going to love it. And God says it's going to be supernatural that only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do this thing. And now listen, I want to hear from you. I want you to message me. When that camel comes, I want you to message me and say, uh, Andrew, that word was for me. That word, I received it. I, I sowed seed. I blessed it. I, I prayed into it. And I thank God it is manifested in my life. Because I so am convinced. I'm, I'm just convinced that God is is doing that for you today. Thank you for joining me on this broadcast. Share the broadcast. Join me next Friday, same time, same place. Uh, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Click that bell. Get the notifications. If you're on the Andrew Tao Facebook page, be sure to like it. Uh, uh, be sure to like the page. Many of you interact, but you don't haven't liked the page yet. Like the page. Turn on the notifications so you know that when we go live, don't forget the Dynamic Fire podcast. It's a blessing. You can get it wherever uh, you get your podcast. Also, I have a new book that's coming out in January called Breaking the Spirit of Delilah, Accessing God's Power to Topple Ancient Strongholds. You don't want to, you want this book because I'm telling you, there's been a slumbering spirit that's come over the church, over the people of God. But God is saying, awaken, awaken, awaken. And so uh, uh, you'll want to get that book. Also, if you're anywhere, anywhere that you can get to Chattanooga, Tennessee on this Sunday, we have Karen Wheaton in the house. We have Chosen in the house. I'm going to be here. The Ramp Worship Team is going to be here. You want to be here because God is here. And there are going to be miracles and manifestation. I want to pray over you for just a moment. Lord, I thank you for each one. I came and I delivered the word. Even the resistance that I faced right before the broadcast. God, I thank you that that is confirmation that the camels are coming. And they're bringing caravans of blessing. They're bringing destiny, accelerated destiny. And they are bringing divine provision and divine connections that are going to release the key. It's the key to the next level. It's the key to the next level. Come on. We thank you, Lord, 
for the camels bringing the key to the next level. I say it's unlocked in the name of Jesus. The next level for you believers, it's unlocked in Jesus' name. That key, I believe even today, divine connections are being released in your life. Divine connections are coming forth. Call it forth. They're coming forth today. I thank you, Lord, that we will not go left when you're saying go right. Uh, Keep your people from making wrong decisions. Keep them into alignment with your will. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it's God. Just because it's opened doesn't mean it's God. You've got to discern the camels. You've got to discern the blessing. You've got to discern what God has brought to you. Don't walk by feeling, but walk by faith, being led by the Spirit of God. That's a word of warning for someone. Be led by the Spirit of God because He is your help, He is your guide, and He will lead you down the path. So, Lord, I thank you for opening doors that no man can shut and closing doors that no man can open. We call it done today in the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. You receive it today. Share this broadcast. I love you guys. I'll see you again next week. God bless you.